mercy he has shown us his love is forever faithful to the end of days come then all you nations sing of the lord's goodness melodies of praise and thanks to god bring out the lord's glory praise him with your music worship him and bless his name God is in his holy place, God who unites those who dwell in his house. He himself, give, he himself gives might and strength to his people. And let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. This morning as we gather together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins and ask for God's pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that, with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request, so God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one equal to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have said, O oh Lord, the 
that my part is to keep your words. The love of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Let your kindness comfort me according to your promise to your servants. Let your compassion come to me that I may live. For your law is my delight. For I love your commands more than gold, however fine. For in all your precepts I go forward. Every false way I hate. Wonderful are your decrees, therefore I observe them. The revelation of your word sheds light, giving understanding to the simple. Lord, I love your command. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined he also called, and those he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls, when he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, today we find ourselves in Matthew's Gospel, as we remember from last week and the week before, that we are sitting in the natural amphitheater at the foot of the Sea of Galilee. And as we mentioned before, it was this is where Jesus pushed off in a boat, sat in the boat on the water, and spoke to the people gathered along the side of the hill, which I saw where that place was. And as we mentioned before, it was a natural amphitheater so that everybody could hear what Jesus was saying. I would not be surprised if the Lord God in heaven made sure that amphitheater was there for his son to speak. And so that's where we are. We're in the amphitheater. Jesus is in the boat speaking to us, teaching us about the kingdom of God. A couple of weeks ago, we heard about the sower and the seed. And Jesus is the sower, and he's sowing seed everywhere in the bushes and the rocks on the path. 
on the side of the hill, and most of the seed is lost. All the words of Jesus and the actions of Jesus, a lot of the seeds did not bear much fruit. But then, of the seed that fell on the good soil, there was a huge bounty, 60, 30, 100 fold. And so, the message for us is God's word never comes back void. We heard that in the first reading. His word never comes back void, and we are to go and do the same. Sow the seeds of charity and love to all we meet. Last Sunday, we heard about the wheat and the tares, another familiar story where Jesus, sowing the good seed, is like the farmer who sowed the good seed of wheat in the field. And then when that farmer was away, the evil one, Satan, came in and he, he sowed the evil seed of tares. And now many times we've heard about the story of the wheat and the weeds, but it's not just weeds. These are special kind of weeds in this story. They're called tares, and they're poisonous. So the seed sown by the evil one is poisonous, and if we consume enough of it, it will kill us. It's deadly. And so Pope Benedict XVI reflects on this story, and he shared with us that the field is our soul, and the good seed is the seed of Jesus Christ, actions of kind actions and his word sown in our soul. And then there's the evil one sowing seeds that are poisonous to our soul and will kill us. And so the question for us is, who's going to win? Is it going to be Jesus or the evil one? And Pope Benedict tells us, whichever one we nourish. So he encourages us to nourish the good seed. And so we pick three sins, right? The sin of pride, the poison. The poison of pride can kill us. And we overcome that with the grace of humility. The second, a second deadly sin was the sin or the, well, the exaggerated anger or rage, the poison of rage which can destroy us if we, if we allow it. And we overcome that, and we can see that in the news, right? We can see how rage can destroy families. We see rage in our streets. So we can overcome this with meekness and forgiveness. And the third deadly sin that we talked about was the horrible sin of envy and jealousy, which can just eat us alive. It is a poison, and we can overcome that with the grace of gratitude. And so, today, now, we have two parables that go together. They probably are among the two shortest parables in the New Testament. Now, we remember that a parable is a story that is in the what's called the wisdom tradition. And so a parable usually, usually has one meaning to it, and you either get it or you don't get it. If you understand the culture and the language, it's pretty simple. For example, we've used this one in this church in the past. Uh, a stitch in time saves nine. And so for those of us who know what a stitch is, I have stitches in my forehead and elsewhere from being a child. A stitch in time can save a lot of problems later on. If you stitch a garment early, you can save the garment later. So a stitch in time saves nine. Uh, time is on my side as another example of a parable-like situation. So if we understand the words, we understand the meaning. Now the problem is that the parables that Jesus spoke uh, were in a different language, in a different culture, and 2,000 years ago. So we need a little bit of help from the scripture scholars to understand what they truly mean, what they meant to the Jewish people in those days. So let's take one, let's take the easy one, uh, the merchant. 
in search of fine pearls. A lot has been written on that. You can go through all kinds of commentaries and listen to people comment on the meaning of the merchant in search for fine pearls. But basically, it's pretty self-evident. You have a man, person, who loves pearls for whatever reason, and he is going around the world, or his part of the world, looking for this special pearl that's just, just for him, the pearl of great price. And when he finds it, he's so happy, so overcome with joy, that he sells everything he has, or he gets all his money, and he buys it so he can possess it. And so this is a parable of the joy of finding something of great value to you. We probably have experienced that in our own lives. Uh, perhaps uh, you met your spouse, and I mean, I've talked to a lot of people who have said to me, as soon as I met my, my spouse many years ago, uh, within a day or two or a week or two, I knew, I knew this one was for me. I experienced that in my own way with the Dominican order. I, when I was in college, I was looking at diocesan priests. I was looking at Franciscans. I looked at the Jesuits because they were over in Boston College. And I was looking at those three groups and it was only when I met the Dominicans that I knew, almost immediately, you know, within a few months, I thought, this, this is for me. This is the fit. This is the pearl of great price for me. And I was right. I guessed correctly. And so we, we've experienced this. And I was happy to give up all that I had and come into the order. I, I gave up nothing, really. Um, I gained a lot more. And so... We know what it's like to find the pearl of great price. Now, the second parable is similar. Man is going through the field, as we hear, and he walks, and he somehow, I don't know how, but he finds a treasure in the field. Now, in those days, in that part of the world, as you know, they, they didn't have banks or anything like that, so people would take their valuables and bury them. They'd find a place in the ground and bury it. So this man somehow found a treasure in the field, and the law was finders keepers. You find it, you can keep it. But this man went and took everything he had and bought the field, even though he didn't have to, he did. Took his money, bought the field, and possessed the treasure. And many, and he did this because of the joy and the excitement of finding this treasure. And we can identify with that. Perhaps many of you were looking for your dream home. You find it, you sell your old home, pack up, move to your dream home. Or perhaps it could be more, more difficult. You find a dream job. That's what happened with my brother. He was in New Hampshire which is God's country, you know, and he packed up and found a job out here, Southern California, where he moved his six kids and his family, and he's been here ever since. He found a good job, packed up everything, sold his old house, and bought the new one and moved out. So we know what it's like to find the treasure in the field, but, but, this story is different. The word treasure, if you or I were living in those days and we were good practicing Jewish people, we would have seen more to this story than just a treasure in the field. As a matter of fact, in Exodus chapter 19, God calls his people, his chosen ones, and says to them, you can look it up, chapter 19, verse 5, he said, if you obey my covenant, you will be my people, and you will be my treasure. My treasure. In Deuteronomy, twice, the Lord God said to his people, you are my chosen people. You are my treasure, my prized Possession. And again in Psalms 135, he says, You are my prized possession. 
you are my treasure. And the Jewish people in the time of Jesus knew that, and they know it to this day, that they are the chosen ones and that they are the treasure of God. So what is this treasure all about for us today? The treasure that goes together with the pearl of great price, these two parables fit. They talk about the joy of finding, but they say more than that. The treasure that is found in the field and the pearl of great price is you. You are God's treasure. You are the pearl of great price. And you are the reason that God was willing to give up all that he had so that we would be saved. He was willing even to send his own son into the world. I was giving a retreat a short time ago to lay, some lay people, and we were talking about uh, how the father has sent his son into the world to die on the cross and to be crucified for us and for our salvation. And a woman stood up and gave her testimony, and she said to me, and I'll never forget this as long as I live, she said, um, I have a beautiful daughter, which she does, and that daughter is now studying at Notre Dame, very pretty girl, and she said to us, I couldn't even imagine what it would be like to take my beautiful daughter and nail her to the cross. I can't imagine what kind of love that would be. And she was so moved that she filled up with tears. Well, that is the kind of love, and that is the extent to which God would go to protect us from evil and to protect us from the evil one. And so today's sermon is this. The two parables do tell us about the joy of finding. That's very true. So we are filled with joy when we find the, the spouse, the dream house, the vocation, and the Lord. When we find the Lord in our lives and we find all of these things, we are filled with joy. And we are willing to give up just about everything to have it, to possess it. However, this story is about more than that. It is not just a story about our joy. This is a story about God's joy and the joy in the kingdom of heaven that takes place every time we repent. Every time we are found, every time we repent, every time we step into a confessional, Every time we confess our sins to the Lord, there is great joy in the kingdom of God, and there is great joy in the Lord himself. And so I end with this quote from Pope, uh, Pope Saint, well, Pope Saint Leo the Great, who lived in 400 to 461 AD, so a long time ago, and he said, Remember your dignity, O Christian, and do not forget that you have been rescued from the power of evil and brought into the light of God's kingdom. So remember your dignity, O Christian. You are the treasure in the field. You are the pearl of great price for which God gave his only son for our redemption. Now together, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us now bring our prayers and petitions to the Lord. For your church, that nourished by your grace and empowered by your spirit, she may continue to draw souls throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve in public office, that their policies and actions may be guided by your gift of wisdom, mercy, and life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our society may overcome all forms of prejudice, especially with those whose race, background, or faith differ from our own, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves for the wisdom to understand, recognize, and invest in ourselves in what is truly of eternal value, to transform the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homebound and those burdened by illness, that you may remain at their side, strengthening and comforting them with your healing presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our for those who have died, especially Alan Halla, that they may now enjoy the treasure of everlasting life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Mary Alice Gonsalves, in whose memory this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, our God, hear our prayers and grant us what we ask in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life 
and lead us all to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Mary Alice Gonsalves, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together now, let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us all for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, just one announcement. Uh, we, have mass. we will have Mass uh, tomorrow morning outdoors. It's 8 o'clock a.m. here at St. Agnes by the Shrine. Uh, we may have it uh, live streamed. If possible, we're going to give it a try. Also, there will be mass or masses this week from Monday through Friday, every day at 7.30 a.m. in the parking lot by the Shrine. Anything else? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you.